Hey everybody! Welcome back to another land place of finding Isaac after Ruth Plus. Hey Ruka, you can't be on the desk. You can't be on the desk. Get down there. Okay. How are we? Calm, cool, collected. 30 wins in a row. Hit the button, Dad. Not that button, you weirdos. Okay, right off the bat, we have no idea how much HP we have, but our stats are really good. J Fox, my favorite rapper. Oh, you've never heard of J Fox? Uh, he's uh, in his album Back to the Future, published by the Frighteners, P9HC as well. So, don't freak out, okay? We know we can sustain at least one hit from a non champion. Because, you know, you never start a run on a half heart. Golden Teleporter is also extremely useful. But, like, endeavor not to get hit early, for sure. Let's see who our boss is. Little Horn. Not a problem with this kind of DPS. Feeling good so far. Now, you might say, uh, Ryan, NL, Eggman. Depends how familiar we are, I suppose. Um, or just, hey you! Isaac boy! Don't, don't call me that. I will ignore you in public. Then you'll have to post one of those copy pastas. I saw a Northern Lion at the grocery store. Oh, like you're doing right now? Give me that HP. Then, yo, not really that good, but still. Um, no, I see this cat. He's looking at the computer. He wants to jump on it. Yeah, go, go, go. Okay. Tomo, you can stay, okay, buddy? Tomo, he's just chill, dude. Enjoying the day after his fifth birthday. Um,. There were two reasons uh, why, and this is what the bit I was going for earlier, I went, ah, when I lifted up my cat. One is, well, there's three reasons. One is I'm weak. Um, one is that Ruka's, he's a heavy boy. He's not like one of those grossly overweight pets you see that where you go, it's cute, but also very, very sad. Um, but he's, he's a larger boy. And the, uh, the final reason is that I worked out today. For, well, I mean, I I've, I go through fits and spurts of working out. Okay, hold on. Maybe don't say spurt like that. Gets the people going in all the wrong ways. I'll take one pill and leave. And by take, I mean hold one pill and leave. Um, I used to be uh, really into, when I was younger and uh, unemployed, uh, I used to be really into lifting weights. I never really got, you know, super impressively jacked or anything like that, but I was in good shape and I knew all the words, delayed onset, muscle soreness, hypertrophy, meal timing, you know, making sure you get 0 0.6 to 1.0 grams of protein per lean body mass kilogram, you get the idea. Luck up. We also have a tinted rock right here, or maybe close, so we'll go get it. And I just kind of fell out of it, you know, I every <clears throat> year and a half or so, that was not a, a comedic effect cough, I, I had to clear my throat there. Um, every year and a half, two years or so, I'm like, I'm gonna get in good shape, and then I start biking, or I run, and then I get sick, and lose, I mean, basically, it's not a good excuse, it's just, it, it's what happens. I wonder... No, we'd only get to the regular secret room here, so I don't even think I'm gonna go to the shop. We'll just hope for more battery charges in the future now that we can actually have keys and bombs and get to secret rooms and etc. and etc. Yo, this run is great, by the way. Um, but yeah, I haven't, uh, you know, done a workout that involves lifting weights in like literally five years or so. Um, which is a sobering thought, you know, considering how, how often I would do it. When I was younger, oh god. Dude, this room sucks. Let me out. Use your brain. Oh my god, we made it. I can't believe we got to deal with the devil out of this. Um, it, it, Things are coming too fast and too furious for me to make a bit here. Please, I beg you. Um, Yes, but not uh, contract from below. Not contract from below. Missing page two is what I mean. Anyway. Um, so I, you know, I have all this inertial knowledge in my head from when I was stronger and in better shape, and I, I tried to apply it, and dude, it sucked really bad. Like, uh, I was, you know, doing some lifts, and I, you know, I'm starting slow, because I am aware of the fact that I'm older and in much worse shape than, uh, you know, when I was actively doing it when I was substantially younger. Um, but, 
you know, then I was like, okay, so the routine I'm on here, it, it calls for doing some dumbbell squats. So I picked up some, you know, relatively not impressive dumbbells. Busted out 10 squats, and I thought to myself, man, like, that was harder than I remember it being, for sure. Especially with a weight that's this light. And I waited, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. I busted out another 10, and when I got up, I went, man, I'm really lightheaded and incredibly nauseous. Then I put the weights back on the rack, went to the uh, locker room, got in a stall, and uh, just spit into the toilet for like five or six minutes, and then uh, left. And I was like, I think that's a good sign that my workout is probably done for today. Maybe, I'm not, it's not even like a man, I'm a... I'm a big time, like, uh, workout dude. Like, I push my... You ever see Pump and Iron, dude? I push myself till I throw up. I was like, this is bad. I should not be... Next time, we'll, we'll go a little lighter on the, on the weights for the squats. Because that was... And, I mean, I'm... Looking forward to the delayed onset muscle soreness, no question about it. But, like, it's a sobering reminder. You know, the human body is, uh, is a terrible thing, but it's also an amazing thing. You know, if you keep it up for... Three months, start to see some some serious results. Otherwise, you know, you're on your hands and knees in the... It's like a... <laughs> I'm not... Trying to think of an artist uh, who would be a great analog for, you know... Hands and knees in the locker room. Yeah. That's, that was supposed to be System of a Down, but... The toxicity... Hold on. We need to use Golden Teleporter effectively. So, second secret room, please. Alright, we'll at least take ourselves to the second secret room. And was there a battery charge in here? There was. Um, so this will be Boss Trap Room. Which we'll then do. Use it, but then make sure you grab this so you have the, uh, you get the charge for it here. Although, now that I think about it, we're not going to get a full charge anyway. Is it worth uh, a bomb to look for a battery charge so that you can get to an error room? I think so. I mean, we're, we're trying to get another item out of this floor. I, I think it's well worth giving it a shot. It's more expensive than I'd like to spend, but it also, you know, it is what it is. Could be worth nothing, could be half decent, for sure. Anyway, it's uh, just a reminder, you know, it's a long way back keep keep those new year's routines pumping i mean when i was in some of the best shape of my life it was when i was in uh college and it's really i'm not saying oh, like the human body's a husk that you know keeps me from dancing with the one i love that's uh it's called the arcade fire it's called pitchfork media look it up sweetheart um but you know i was in some of the best shape of my life in in college I was working out like four days a week, and also uh, imbibing way too many adult beverages at least three times a week. How did I feel? Like, largely amazing. I mean, some rough mornings, no, no doubt about it, but for the most part, every single day, I was like, this is a dream come true. Every day is a golden gift. Now do some dumbbell squats. And my, my body's like, hey, don't do that. I'm going to make you throw up for no reason. Body? Yo, AAA battery's really good here. Um, body, are you aware of the purpose of vomiting? I didn't throw up, thankfully. But I, I also, I have no pride about throwing up. You know, I've, I've thrown up enough in my life um, that I understand most of the time you're better off. Oh, please, NL, I'm eating. <laughs> Look. It happens, okay? I'll tell you, dude, I, my grossness tolerance is through the roof. And so people will talk about like, oh, are you worried about having a kid? You're gonna have to change diapers. You think I give a, an F about like baby poop? It doesn't bother me at all. I clean up cat vomit and when I was 16, I had surgery on my testicles. This, these are not fake stories. I'm, I'm not just playing them up for laughs. You know, there's all sorts of... Like, I have... And not to mention, you know, the amount of the dissections I did, you know, when I was doing my biology degree. 
Like, I, the grossness is no big deal. Now, if you want to, you know, scare me, oh, you're having a kid? We're not having a kid, by the way. Not for a few years, anyway. But uh, what you should be saying is, oh, you're having a kid? Aren't you worried about getting six hours of sleep a night? And I'll be like, ah! Please, I'm trying to relax. Don't tell me those horror stories. But, uh, you know, I think some people, they have a, a misguided sense of pride about throwing up. They think that, you know, oh, it worked, thankfully. They think that uh, throwing up is uh, weak. Like, if you're nauseous, just hold it together. Wouldn't it be better if you didn't throw up? Well, in some situations, even if you're nauseous, you don't want to throw up, you know? You're at an important function, wedding, funeral. You know, your annual performance review at work, probably a bad time, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, if you're at the privacy of your own home, you got access to a bathroom, I'm not saying you should force yourself to throw up when you feel nauseous. But if you really feel, you know, you can, it becomes harder to swallow, and then the temperature in the room goes up by 10 degrees instantly, and you're like, oh, I'm going to throw up. Sometimes it's just better to let it fly, man. I got no, uh... I got no pride about that. I'd rather let it fly and feel better immediately than hold it in. I mean, it, throwing up is like extremely bad for you. So holding it in is, is like better physically, but like from a psychological sense, <laughs> substantially more frustrating. Anyway, this episode's taken a weird turn. I didn't want to stay, you know, when I woke up early today and I went down to the gymnasium. I didn't say to myself, boy, I really hope I uh, have an anecdote about nausea later today. It just, that's the way life, it comes at you fast sometimes. So I gotta do like two things here once I finish this room. First one, I gotta, it, it's January. I gotta take off this sweater. It's, it's only 29 in here, but it's... 29 and rising and I already showered today I would prefer not to have to do it again and then I'm gonna open the door and turn off the heat Yo, bad news boys the heat's already off get a little ventilation going okay here we are back in the saddle again Tomo Sorry to wake you, my son. It's just, it was very, temporarily very hot there. Okay. So, we don't want to teleport yet. In case you're wondering about my, my two cents on this run, it's very, very, very good. But we're so far behind schedule, largely because of trying to make uh, golden teleporter work. That's usually the cost you pay, but... Anyway. I'm not letting it dissuade me. I know, you know, the first workout's the hardest. Again, you're I, I'm dealing with old science here, for sure. Like, when I was, uh, you know, first starting to get into working out over a decade ago. Well over a decade ago, now that I think about it. But, you know, there were people that were like, you should be doing large compound lifts at all times, and then here's how you do pre- and post-workout nutrition. And then there was like... Uh, you know, 60-year-old dudes who are like, I just lift rocks and drink a lot of milk. That's my weight loss, or that's my uh, how to get jacked solution. It worked for Charles Atlas back in the 1950s. Why wouldn't it work for me now? So I feel like I'm dealing with outdated knowledge, but simultaneously I'm like, you know, I, I know what's up. Sort of. Yeah, I've, I've been down this road before. And it does feel good, you know, don't you remember what uh, Reese Witherspoon said in uh, Legally Blonde? Open and shut case, your honor. Exercise releases endorphins, endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't kill their husbands. If Reese Witherspoon, as Elle Woods, said that, it must be true. No person who's ever exercised has ever committed murder. Speaking of which, uh, have you guys watched the Netflix original series, Murder Mountain? I thought about a couple of times how to approach the way I'm going to talk about this show. You know I love true crime stuff. How does Murder Mountain rank on the true crime scale? I actually don't think it's that good as a piece of media. 
That's not to say there's not merit in it, and it is an interesting story. But compared to other true crime stuff on Netflix, um, I, I think it's a cut below the rest, and that's okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, I like it, but not that much. Um, but it's about, um, you know, the these hills in Northern California where it, illegal cannabis grow operations have taken place for, like, decades. And now that legalization has happened, you know, how is that changing the, uh, at least on a state level, how is that changing, uh, you know, the the demographics of the region and the personalities of the people that live there and so on and so forth. Dude, this, we got incredible value here. This is Golden Teleporter in a nutshell, and I'm not even going to do the nutshell joke because I respect it. Um, and it's all also the used, uh, there's like a murder case involved in the story that's kind of interwoven as a, as not an allegorical tale, but like a slice of life for, you know, how things work in the area. But anyway, there's, <clears throat> you guys see the Black Mirror episode from the, the season before Bandersnatch, uh, where the lady just can't stop killing, no matter how hard, she's trying her darndest, but she just can't stop killing, at the risk of spoiling a little bit of Murder Mountain, and I want to point out, these are real people, I don't, I don't mean to insult them, but there's like four episodes of this six episode show, where I just was like, like, watching and horrified, but also simultaneously thinking to myself, what if you guys just stop shooting each other over nothing? <laughs> There's like, I know I don't exist in this world, but it was still baffling to me. I'm not trying to make light of their circumstances. But there was like, okay, so like a murder happened. Fair. I mean, not something you want to see, but it, it does happen. Uh, Magic Mush, extremely great. Uh, and then, I don't even think Golden Teleporter does anything for us here, so we'll take something else. Dude, Steam Sale Champion Belt, uh, don't mind if I do. Uh, as a result of that murder, there's kind of, yes, like a butterfly effect. That was my bad. Um, that leads to other people getting murdered. And they get murdered... No, I want to stick with Golden Teleporter for now. I don't want to say for bad reasons. Because that's a very, I mean, who am I to say what's a bad reason to live or die for, right? But literally, the, like, half of the people involved with this endeavor, and these are like legitimate spoilers, if you care about the spoilers for a real-life documentary, but, um, you know, I was like, yeah, we did this, like, super awesome thing, and then, like, I was hanging out with my buddy, and we got trashed, and somebody came over, and, uh, I said, what are you going to do, shoot me? And then he shot me and I died. Obviously, it's a posthumous interview, I guess. I was just watching and I was like, dude, this, I mean, I guess that's kind of the spirit of the show as well. Because I was like, all of these deaths are so preventable. <clears throat> Literally, it's like, you know, you called a guy a name and the guy was like, oh, oh, I'm a name, huh? I'm a name? Bang, you're dead. There's like 19 different points at which that interaction should never have gotten to the point where murder was even on the table. I don't want Void. I, I, I love it under certain situations, but maybe not right now. And I recognize this is an insular bit, but you know, like when I watch, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, a, a real life documentary. You know, when I watch like, it's not a non-fiction piece, but when I watch Breaking Bad, you know, People die in the show. For the most part, the deaths make thematic sense. Real life isn't always like that, I suppose. Like, if some of the stuff that happened in Murder Mountain happened on Breaking Bad, you would be like, why did he do that? Did... Oh, so Jesse called this guy a slur and he just shot him and killed him. Like, you, you probably wouldn't believe it. Honestly, I don't think we do this either. I'm I, it, turning over a new leaf. Like they're fighting over business rights and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, get him, dad. But it, literally, there's just some situations where they're just like, yeah, we were just hanging out. And then, oh, uh, another dose of murder. What are you going to do? Anyway. Oh, that was dumb of me. 
Um, I'm being kind of like deliberately ignorant. It's a bad look right now, but simultaneously, if you watch the, everybody else is talking about like, wow, what an interesting show, how cool, like I didn't know that there was this perspective on blah, 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 blah. I'm watching the show going like, maybe you guys should just stop shooting each other. I know it's not that easy, and you know, but I mean, isn't it? Yo, there is another battery charge. We're so lucky. Now watch a different show. True crime documentary on Netflix called The Innocent Man. Uh, if you like making a murderer. What is happening? If you like making a murderer. If you like, uh, you know, true crime documentaries like that. Innocent Man. Way more up my alley. Murder Mountain's still pretty interesting, you know. Man, we're only on the Dank Depths 1. This is... I mean, very slow, but also very good. Anyway. I don't necessarily feel 100% comfortable with the way I came across and besmirching the name of the people who live on quote-unquote Murder Mountain, but simultaneously... I mean, maybe I... I don't know. Maybe it's that I... I don't know if it's a, like, self-confidence or a lack of self-confidence sort of thing. Because Rob and I have talked about this in the past. And now I'm going to break my own principles to take Guppy's collar. Because I think, you know, I'd love to become Guppy. Uh, if possible. Even at the risk of losing a little bit of HP to make it so. You know, somebody, like, insults you in public. Rob's like, you gotta fight him. They're, like, you know, affecting your honor. And I'm like, if someone insults me in public, I'm just going to leave, man. And I get that this is two different ways to deal with the same problem. But, like, I I have no interest in getting involved in a fist fight with anybody that is wanting to fight me, probably. Not just because I think I'll lose. And that's not... What, you think he's going to beat you up? Yeah, I mean, like, I think that's a pretty realistic sort of like way to think about it but secondarily i also just like don't want to you know ruin my life even if i were to beat him up i don't want to get you know like an assault charge just because he and you know i was walking down the street and he was like hey baldy you bald idiot <laughs> it's a it's a young man's folly you know to See, there's, I think, two different kinds of ways you can live in the, in the modern world. You could be uh, ignorant to the fact that, you know, we're dealing, you know, inside of us, we have these genes that evolved, you know, on the, you know, the planes, where we see every situation as, like, uh, you know, a test of the social hierarchy, or are people going to lose face? Is this going to affect my ability to pass on my genes in the future, or even just survive? And then there's uh, me, and I'm just like, dude, I'm just riding it out till we get those robot bodies. So please don't touch the merchandise. That's where I'm at, basically. I think we already checked there for the secret room. I'm not saying there's not a good reason to get into a fight. I think that's not fair. I'll tell you, I don't know, okay? I think there's like two good reasons to get into a fight. One is self-defense. And then the other one, and I don't really know where I fall on this issue. Are there cognitive studies in this? What do you do? Like, this is a very common trope in media. What do you do? You know, you got a 10-year-old son, and he's being bullied. This is a real question. I, I want to know your real opinion on it. Don't shy away from it. Do you teach your son how to throw a punch, and then have him kick the Christ out of the bully once and probably never be bullied again or do you teach him to you know go the high road and just ignore the bully because like here's the thing as an adult it's easy right the only time you know if, if you get bullied by someone it's got to be like i'm not saying it doesn't happen because there's obviously like cyber bullying and stuff like that but it's got to happen like in the workforce hold on i gotta hit the snooze button on this otherwise if someone's bullying you you just be like i mean you obviously walk away you just go yeah cool uh Okay, oh, whatever, Tom. Never gonna see you again because I'm in control of that stuff. As a kid, it's different. You know, if you have a bully, they might be your bully in school for like the next 10 years. Good, good walking there. Great idea. 
I'm not saying that something's got to be done, but I, I do think a different approach is perhaps warranted. So I don't know where I fall on that issue, but that might be the second of the two issues where I could consider, you know, a fight being the most appropriate option, because... Yo, bad for a rate of fire, but still. Um, that's not to say that I endorse violence. You know, I would love to take the high road and say that, you know, you shouldn't, uh, you know, ever lay hands on somebody else. I'm not, I'm also not one of those people, and I know people like this, and they scare the crap out of me, that are like, man, that's a perfect world scenario. You think we've evolved, but in this world, it's still kill or be killed. And I'm like, you stay away from me, you freaking weirdo. Go back on the Doomsday Prepper show. <laughs> it's the same, I feel like it's the exact same kind of people that are like, yeah, man, I just can't wait till the nuclear bombs go off and my neighbors come over begging me for a cup of rice, and then I shoot them and harvest their organs. Like... It's the same kind of people, and they somehow trick themselves into thinking that their approach is, like, enlightened and noble. But, you know, someone's physically harassing you. Maybe? And that's not, like, a maybe, like, I don't want to say it. That's a maybe, like, I literally don't know. I, I was never really, like, systemically bullied. I had a couple of kids who were, uh... I mean, we're very young, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, who were mean to me, for sure. Like, I think I've told a story before. But, like, we were lining up to get in from recess once. And, uh, I lined up, and then this kid behind me was like, hey, you butt me in line. I just want to point out, this is the line to get back into the school. <laughs> he was like, you butted in front of me in line, which is our version of cutting in line um and i said what no i didn't and then he i turned around he tapped me on the shoulder and punched me in the nose and then the teacher gave both of us discipline because it's like a you know in the nhl if you didn't see what happened but somebody's bleeding ah just give them both two minutes he probably did something to deserve it right um anyway i i what was my technique for dealing with the bullies well he's you know privately laugh to myself now that we're adults and his life is in shambles because I'm a petty human being. Like, that's that's the way you do it, okay? That's something I've, uh... I wouldn't say I've struggled with, but there were people, like, from my middle school that I, like, really dislike. But I don't dislike them as adults. I dislike the 12-year-old version of themselves. I feel like it's kind of intellectually dishonest. To say that, like, you know, they probably haven't changed, people don't change, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's true, you know? And I, I have to reconcile this, because I feel like there's, you know, especially in college, there were probably people that I met that didn't like me very much. You know, I wasn't going around bullying people, but I might have been. You know, it's a classic kind of, like you know, smart guy or guy who thinks he's smart archetype where, you know, you just like at, at all times you think you're the cleverest person in the room. We've always got a funny comment, you know, never take anything seriously. You might think that that describes me now and it does, but I'm like way less abrasive about it, way more understanding. Anyway, so, you know, I, I think about it sometimes and I'm like, man, there's probably people that I met in college that were like, that guy's a real piece of garbage. And, uh, I mean, I wasn't a piece of garbage at the time. Dude, we definitely want the knife. But uh, I've, I've changed a lot since then to begin with. So how am I, you know, it's hypocritical of me to hold the opinion that, you know, I should be judged on the merits of my actions as an adult over the past decade or so. Uh, when for people that, you know, maybe were rude to me in middle school, like... I'm trying to think, it was like 18, 19 years ago, I'm like, yeah, screw that guy, he's a piece of garbage. But like, you know, <laughs> it's kind of the luxury of, of being your own adult, I guess, is that you can be like, screw that guy, he's a piece of garbage. Even though now he's, you know, people like that, they have kids of their own that they're raising, hopefully better than they themselves were raised. Anyway, it's a complicated issue. I'm not even, I don't think this is super contentious. I, you know, I, I like to get uh, vulnerable sometimes, you know, and, and talk about, uh, by the way, we're not going to be using too much more of uh, Golden Teleporter at this point. This is usually where, in my strategy, we start to go fast. 
And this run is beyond a set right now. Anyway, um, you know, I think about it from time to time. I do think people change. I don't, I definitely do not believe that people can never change. I think that's uh, a needlessly cynical worldview. I will say there's probably a statute of limitations. If somebody is like a piece of trash to you, like they treat you like garbage and they're in like their 40s, you're pro, you know, maybe when they're 70, they, they'll apologize to you, but I think for the most part, like, the die is cast. But certainly if somebody's, like, you know, 11, and they're like, you're fat, you know? If you're still holding that grudge, you know, in your 30s, it's probably, you know, I'm not saying you should go seek them out, you know, and try to make it right. All I'll say is, you know, it's probably worth letting go of. Or holding on to it as, you know, motivation. That's another, you know, viable option, I suppose. If you can use it as motivation to, you know, uh, I don't know, become like a Mr. Olympia candidate or something like that. But, like, maybe don't do the pharmaceutical stuff. But then, oh, you believe that? Okay, NL, I didn't realize you're a doctor. Okay, look, I don't know, okay? I'm not Victor Conti. I don't, I'm not well-versed in that sort of stuff. Believe it or not, there is a loss lurking inside of this guaranteed win. And it involves hubris. It involves a overly aggressive... I really... Oh, we already found the second secret room. An overly aggressive approach to deals with the devil. So only take stuff... Okay, well this helps out a great deal. Only take stuff that's absolutely meaningful. We also got the ability to fly out of that. We're cruising, boys. No problems. And forget about Guppy. With Mom's knife, we don't need it. Could use a new spacebar item, but oh well. Anyway, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, you don't have to forgive your bullies, you know. I, I think that it's completely... Here, I'll, I'll legitimately, in like uh, middle school, there's a kid I really, really disliked. Just kind of like an overall D-hole, you know? And uh, I added him on Facebook like a decade later because it was in that phase where you're like, I went to math class with them once. Add him on Facebook. I need to have a catalog of everybody I've ever met in my life on here. And uh, I've totally forgot about it. And then like a year ago, he poked me. You know, that antiquated Facebook feature. And I just went, you know what? It's, I don't even want to know what's going on here. So I just deleted him. Removed him as a friend. Because you know, we, have, we haven't spoken to each other since like the year 2001. You know, and I don't know where he's going to poke me. I don't know how... It, it, misclick or... I'm not assuming that he was like, yeah, I'm going to get him, I'm going to poke him. But maybe he was like, hey, you know, wonder what this guy's up to, let's give him a poke. And I was like, you know what, yeah, he didn't... I'm not going to respond to that. You know, I, I read a great article, and I feel like I'm ahead of the curve, because it's the first time I've ever read this article, by the way. It said, uh, forget a, basically, there's this phenomenon called Inbox Zero, which is like, I have no unread emails. I'm on top of everything. And this article from, you know, a, a writer, and also, a, I think, like a tech investor, was like, forget about Inbox Zero, except Inbox Infinity. Just because somebody sends you an email, that doesn't mean you have to respond. You're going to be burned out for the rest of your life if, you know, anytime anybody emails you on planet Earth, regardless of who they are, you give them five minutes of your time, you know? A lot of emails are kind of like telemarketing calls, I, I think. And that's not to say they're, they're disliked or unwarranted, but, like, I've been a... By necessity, I've embraced Inbox Infinity for a long time. People act like I'm selfish for it. Like, hey, you know, I sent you an email, uh, you know, I wanted you to check out my app that's totally not a pyramid scheme and you didn't respond. What the frick? Well, you know, without being rude, I, you know, there's a different story if you solicit the uh, the email. If you email somebody, they respond and then you ghost them. That's different. But if you just respond to every email you get. And I know like when I was younger, I would have been like, it's not that hard. It is that hard. 
once you start getting, you know, dozens of emails a day minimum, and I'm being deliberately kind of low on that number. Dude, the battery charges are out of control. Anyway, all I'm saying is this all ties into the theme of, you know, as an adult, part of the good stuff about being an adult is you get to decide who's worth your time, and you can do so dispassionately as well. Like, when I got poked by that guy, I wasn't like, this is revenge for asking me if I was wearing lipstick that day my lips were chapped. They were just chapped, man. I wasn't wearing lipstick. Literally, I was just like, nah, it's not worth it. You haven't earned it, and that's fine. You know, I, I, I don't wish for you to have a, a life of, of sorrow, but simultaneously, like, you know, we haven't we haven't built up that equity that allows me to feel good about replying to you and you can do that as an adult and that's cool anyway thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the episode 31 wins in a row if you did click the like button it's a great deal of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future for now thanks for watching though and i'll see you next time see ya